just as the Chinese take over mainland China, gives birth to the modern martial arts film, uh, the true story of Wang Fei Hung, uh, which is uh, uh, 1949. Uh, this movie is about the Cantonese Robin Hood and champion of the downtrodden. Uh, this movie is based on an actual uh, historical character. Now, former Peking opera performer Quan Tak Hing, uh, he plays the title role and repeats it endlessly uh, in almost 100 uh, subsequent movies. Uh, these movies are all low budget, black and white affairs, most of them anyway, uh, but they make tons of money. Now, by the mid-1950s, the exiles and immigrants from mainland China, well, they uh, realize that they will never return home. They realize that their exile is, well, permanent. The Hollywood tradition of escapist entertainment and a large, uh, well, a larger variety of genres, genres including horror movies, begin to appear in both Mandarin and Cantonese uh, cinema. Uh, there's also, of course, lots of romantic fantasies, uh, urban comedies, uh, melodramas, uh, kung fu movies, uh, detective thrillers, uh, musicals, and sexploitation epics uh, begin to crop up around this time. Well, they all proliferate the Hong Kong cinema. As I mentioned, it's a very vigorous cinema. Now, in the post-World War II era, as Hong Kong transforms itself into a major commercial and industrial center, uh, a new teenage audience emerges. Young people that are more educated than their parents, and they're, well, they're more westernized, uh, and they love genre movies. Uh, teen idols soon arise, uh, and uh, screen talent flows regularly between the two, two different Chinese language cinemas. Uh, these teen idols sing in both Cantonese and uh, in Mandarin. Uh, there's big box office receipts. Uh, the cashier's boxes are overflowing. So, of course, powerful movie moguls also emerge. Now, the primary example of these uh, powerful movie moguls are, of course, the Shaw brothers. Uh, with the second of the four brothers, Run Run, Run Run Shaw, at the head of the corporation. Uh, the Shaw brothers uh, began producing and exhibiting films in China during the 1920s. Uh, their father, who was a rich textile manufacturer, well, does not approve. He doesn't approve. Uh, so they uh, changed their last name from Shao to Shaw. Uh, by 1937, the Shaw brothers uh, own more than 100 theaters uh, all over Southeast Asia, uh, and uh, well, they distributed their uh, they distribute their product into Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, as well as their native uh, Hong Kong. Uh, with the arrival of World War II, the Shaw brothers, uh, well, their movie palaces are confiscated by the Japanese, uh, and Run Run is imprisoned. He's imprisoned, he's locked up for subversion, and is almost executed. Uh, the Shaws, however, are clever enough to bury a chest, a chest full of gold, silver, and precious jewels. Uh, so when the war ends in 1945, the Shaw brothers are still rich. In 1958, Run Run uh, moves the Shaw brothers' uh, massive, uh, well, base of operations from Singapore uh, they've been working in Singapore for, uh, well, quite a while. Uh, they moved to Hong Kong, uh, and three years later, uh, Run Run completes Movie Town, uh, the largest studio ever built in Asia, a 46-acre lot. Uh, Movie Town has its own dormitory of actors and actresses, uh, has editing and dubbing rooms, uh, processing labs, uh, well, many sound stages, and a replica of a uh, King Dynasty town uh, that is a marvel to behold. Now, during peak years, Movie Town uh, had a staff of over 1,000 people. Uh, An annual film production uh, was between 40 and 50 movies. That's 40 or 50 movies a year. Uh, the Shaw Brothers crank out genre movies, including horror films, uh, and for reasons that remain obscure, make the majority of their films in the Mandarin dialect. Uh, Cantonese movies continue to be produced by other studios, uh, but basically after the mid, uh, around 63 or so, Hong Kong's native dialect uh, begins to disappear from the screen. 
Uh, and by the early 1970s, Cantonese language cinema uh, has virtually disappeared, is virtually non-existent in Hong Kong. Now, this trend would reverse itself uh, in the late 1970s, and contemporary Cantonese cinema uh, comes into existence. Now, during the late 1950s and into uh, the 1960s, the Shaw brothers are locked in a game of bitter rivalry uh, with the lesser known uh, but a very powerful motion picture and general investment corporation. Uh, these two uh, film production companies are duking it out. Uh, they film the same stories and force each other to abandon projects. Uh, but, but by the mid-1960s, MPGI, well, their directors and stars defect to the Shaw brothers, uh, and the brothers, well, take control of the market. Uh, both film production companies crank out clever and inventive films in just about every imaginable genre. Movies that effortlessly... Uh, well, combine gags uh, with gimmicks, stunts, and spectacle. Uh, the Shaw Brothers movie town rises rapidly to the top of the Hong Kong film industry, setting box office records. Run Run Shaw becomes the mega movie mogul of Asia and rules the roost. He, uh, well, holds court. He's the king of Hong Kong movies. He holds court for, uh, well, three decades. Uh, until he uh, until Run Run finally closes down production uh, around 1986. Now three big film companies, Golden Harvest, DB Company, and Golden Princess, take over the Shaw Brothers theater circuit. Uh, productions increase dramatically. Uh, established Hong Kong movie stars, uh, people like uh, Jackie Chan, Chow Yun Fat, uh, Maggie Chung. Uh, and Michelle Yeoh go global uh, and their action-packed uh, stunt late